Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Slime. Okay, we're on chapter 18, Bottom Banger. Madame Silenzio Slop was the island's piano teacher. You might reasonably assume that a piano teacher taught the piano. In this case, you'd be wrong. Sloth was the idlest music teacher in history. The lady would go to the most extraordinary lengths to avoid having to teach the, any of the children on the island anything. <clears throat> Whenever Re Ned reluctantly rolled himself over to Madame Sloth's house for his weekly lesson, she would not utter a single word to him. Instead, she would look at him haughtily and open her hand to be paid. Once her palm had been crossed with silver, she would waddle over to her old gramophone and put on a recording she had made of her giving a piano lesson. This was just in case any grown-ups were passing by her house and heard what she was really up to. Which was, of course, nothing. Now, child, let Madame Sloth hear those scales one more time, the voice on the crackly old record would say. Then you would hear the sound of piano keys being struck. Blonk, blonk, blonk. Once the illusion had been created, Madame Sloth would take an hour-long snooze on the chaise long. The only way she would wake herself up in that time was with one of her bottom bangers. Baboom! There were the, they were the, as thunderous as a wag... Vag, start a sentence again. They were as thunderous as a Wagner opera. If her bottom bangers didn't wake her, an ordinate... An, an, or, if her bottom bangers didn't wake her, an ornate gold carriage clock on her mantelpiece would chime to tell her the hour was up and her lesson was over. Ching! How was Madame Sloth allowed to get away with this? Because Greta D. Greed did nothing about it. In fact, she encouraged it. Anything that brought her children misery was fine by her. Because never, never... Because Ned never learned a thing about playing the piano in his years of enduring Madame Sloth's piano lessons, he would be sent off to have more and more lessons. One day, when his mother returned home from the fish market, Ned told her what was really happening in those lessons. Nothing. Nout, nada, nothing, diddly squat. Of course, being a grown-up, Ned's mother didn't believe him. Just like all the other grown-ups on the island, Madame Sloth had bamboozled the woman into thinking she was the most fantabulous piano teacher in the whole world. Aside from her gramophone scam, Madame Sloth had a trio of nasty tricks up the sleeve of her long, flowery blouse. If a child dared to complain about the daylight robbery, Madame Sloth would open the piano lid and shut the nasty little wretch inside. The way Madame Sloth would carry on with her Pressure snooze undisturbed. Let me out! If a child attempted to grasp her up to their parents, in the next lesson, Madame Sloth would turn the piano stool upside down and make them perch on one of the legs for the full hour. Ouch! If a child was so bold as to wake Madame Sloth up from one of her snoozes, they would be held upside down by their ankles and forced to play the piano with their nose. Ouch, ouch, ouch! Blonk, blonk, blonk! One time, Ned couldn't take any more of this nonsense. As Madame Sloth lay on the sofa snoring and bottom banging, he shouted, This is the end! I am never, ever, ever coming to one of your stupid piano lessons ever again! Needless to say, the piano teacher woke up in a foul mood. Without a word, Sloth walked out of the piano room and into the kitchen. As Ned sat on the, sat on the piano stool, bemused, she returned clutching not one, not two, but three, not three, but six tins of baked beans. One by one, she ripped them open and guzzled them down in seconds like some kind of strong man at a fair. Her tummy began making the most disturbing sounds like a boiler that was about to explode. I need to go, announced Ned. Just one moment, replied Sloth. Next, she shuffled. It was clear she was clenched. Next, she shuffled over to the boy. From the way she shuffled, it was clear she was clenching her cheeks together. Not her top cheeks, her bottom cheeks. Then, as soon as her behind was close to Ned's nose, she unclenched. No! cried the boy. Sloth let off the most explosive bottom banger of all time. The force of the blast was enough to blow Sh Ned straight out of the window. 
Whoosh! Needless to say, Ned was in no doubt as to how much he and all the children of the island had suffered at the hands of this monstrous woman. He knew that he would be doing them all a favour by teaching the teacher a lesson. The question was, how? Chapter 19. Dance to the Music of Slime It may surprise you to know that for someone who taught the piano, Madame Sloth could not actually play the piano herself. Not a note. In fact, she hated the sound of a piano being played as she did all musical instruments. The only sound she did like was the sound of silence. Silence meant Sloth could sleep in peace. As Ned and Slime flew over the island, Ned spotted the roof of Madame Sloth's grand old black and white house. It was easy to spot as she had a swimming pool the shape of a piano in her garden. No doubt paid for by her ill-gotten gains. There! exclaimed the boy. The pair swooped down to the ground beside the house, looking through the window. Surprise, surprise, they saw that the piano teacher, if you could call her that, was fast asleep on her chaise long, snoring away. Looking across the piano room, Ned and Slime could see the child Sloth was meant to be teaching. The poor thing had been made to stand on one leg on the piano stool whilst balancing a book of sheet music on her head. Presumably this was some kind of punishment, no doubt for daring to stand up to the world's laziest piano teacher. The pigeon set Ned down and translimed back into a blob. The girl balancing on the stool looked as if she were about to expire. Her face had gone as red as a tomato and she was pouring with sweat. She must have been balancing there for a flamingo, like a flamingo, for nearly an hour. With a nod of his head, Ned signalled to her that she should escape. Are you sure? The little girl mimed. She was clearly terrified of the lady sprawled out on the chaise long. Ned nodded his head again. Tentatively, the girl put the other leg down and breathed a gigantic sigh of relief. Oh, thank you, she mouthed before tiptoeing out of the room. Slime slid under the boy's feet and inflated into a ball so Ned was just the right height to slide in through Sloth's open window. The boy eased himself through, landing on a piano stool. The slime ball followed. At first, it was too fat to fit through. Then slime made itself thin and poured itself through. Squelch! Shh! Shush, Ned. Let's not wake sloth. Yet. How best to wake someone who loves silence? With the world's loudest noise, of course. Slime! began the boy breathlessly. His idea was so good he couldn't get it out quick enough. Yelf, replied Slime, now turning back into a blob in the piano room. I need you to become the hugest orchestra in the world. Goody, goody. And I want you to make the noisiest noise that ever... Ned wasn't sure of the word, so guessed at one. Noised. This was perfect payback for Sloth's expensive, explosive bottom banger. In an instant, the blob divided into a hundred smaller blobs. These small blobs, smaller than globules, are called globettes. One by one, the globettes began to take shape. These globettes translimed into musical instruments faster than they could name them. A tuba, a French horn, a violin, a trumpet, a double bass, a harp, a set of cymbals, a xylophone, a bass drum, and last but not least, a giant gong. Madame Sloth was oblivious, still snoozing in her chaise long. Now, orchestra, began Ned. Gather around her and I will conduct. When all of the pieces of the orchestra were in position, as close to the piano teacher as possible, Ned assumed the role of conductor. He picked up a banana from the fruit bowl on the coffee table to use as a baton. The boy had once seen a conductor on the television, so had some sense of what to do. Ned tapped the banana on the table to get the attention of all the slimy instruments. Tap, tap, tap. Still, Madame Snoth, Sloth snored and tramped away. Her bottom bangers were so foul they could strip the wallpaper from the walls. All the instruments in the slime orchestra turned to the conductor. Ned nod and twirled his banana through the air. Boom! The noisiest noise that had ever noised exploded into the room.
shocked sloth shot up off the chaise long. With incredible speed, she smashed up through the ceiling of her piano room. Bang! Smashed through her plush bedroom above. Bang! Finally smashing through the roof of her house. Bang! Ah! Screamed Sloth as she sailed through the air. Ned looked up from the piano stall through the hole in the roof. The boy smiled to himself before he remembered something he had learned. Something important. Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation. In short, what goes up must come down. Ah! screamed Sloth again. Not that screaming did any good, but it seemed like the appropriate thing to do. The large lady was plummeting straight towards little Ned. If the boy didn't do something, and fast, he would be nothing more than human slime. Help! screamed Ned. Now he was screaming too. The piano! Thinking fast, Slime translimed back into a blob and reached around the legs of Madame Sloth's grand piano with its blobby arms. It yanked the instrument under the hole in the roof, knocking Ned on his piano stool out of the way as it did so. Ah! screamed Sloth before crash landing into her own grand piano. My piano! she cried from inside the mess of wood and keys and wire. Now I can't give any more piano lessons! You never did! retorted the boy. Ned, she screamed, I will get you for this. With that, Sloth tried to lift herself up from her piano. In all the kerfuffle, the gold carriage clock toppled off her mantelpiece. It clonked Sloth on the head. Boink! Ouch! she cried. Another job well done, remarked Ned. Always a pleasure, replied Slime as it tried slimed into a rocket. Hop on! The boy smiled and hauled himself up. Then the rocket blasted him through the hole in Sloth's ceiling, high into the sky above. I got the zoomies, howled the boy in delight. Okay, okay thank you for listening today, everyone. I hope you've had a fabulous day. And um, I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Slime, where we'll be reading Chapter 20, Gruesome Twosome. Bye-bye.